In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass worthily, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and pray for You are said to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call us to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. On this uh, sixth day of Easter, in this octave, let us give glory to God. Glory, glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them, disturbed that they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. They brought them into their presence and questioned them, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, in his name this man stands before you healed. 
He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone stone rejected rejected by the builders has become become the the cornerstone. cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. The The stone stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The The stone stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. And he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together with Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went on and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was rightfully clad and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. So Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. Another disciple was there to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel. 
ask for our good. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On uh, this sixth day of the octave of Easter, it's just a reminder of um, how profound our faith um, in the resurrection is that uh, the church in some great wisdom realizes that um, we need a lot of time to uh, really uh, probe uh, the profound faith that we have, especially in the resurrection, and uh, what the resurrection really means. Uh, because the resurrection is um, almost in uh, our language a new normal. And um, in some ways, uh, what we hear about the disciples uh, is a desire uh, to return to the old normal. And that is um, something that I think many of us can relate to as um, we become impatient about returning to our lives, what we think were our lives, uh, the normal that we were used to, that we uh, understood, um, that uh, we could predict. Uh, I think uh, living with uncertainty and unpredictability is driving some of us crazy. It sounds like uh, the disciples were in the same boat. Uh, we have to realize uh, that um, the death and um, the arrest of Jesus and his humiliation and his crucifixion uh, really was almost like um, a hurricane had hit them and uh, really uh, just turned their world upside down. And, um, and so some of the things that um, we gather as we listen to these Gospels are the disciples, um, their lives have been, been so disturbed and so disrupted now desire to just go back to what they used to know. And that is uh, Peter today saying to, his, to the other fellows, um, we know Peter was a fisherman, he says, I'm going fishing. It's almost like uh, I am going to some place that I know, where I, feel, uh, where I feel a little bit of peace, where there is some predictability. This is, um, this is a little secure for me. And we hear his body is thinking, uh, I think we need to do something like that. And um, we also realize um, symbolically that um, returning to the old normal is not working well for them. And it, um, here it is um, in um, the lack of success all night long. So they go out um, to what Peter think was his old life, um, and uh, that doesn't pan out as well. Uh, you know, they come up empty-handed. And uh, is that a sign uh, for all of us as uh, we try to want to rush back to our old normal? That uh, maybe in these troubled times, uh, there is a message of God in there about um, that old normal not being as, uh, as good, and we talk about the good old days, not as good as we fancy it to have been. Uh, is God pointing us to a new way, to a new normal? And uh, that is uh, the encounter they have with Jesus on the shore. Interestingly, uh, this is the other time that uh, we hear they see Jesus and they don't even realize it is him. Because uh, he, is, um, he is transformed. Um, it is um, kind of a new normal for them, for him. Because one of uh, the incidents that we are going to uh, come across in the Gospel this Sunday is um, when uh, Mary Magdalene, of course, uh, we know the the courage of the women on Easter morning, you know, going to the tomb and not finding anything and um, kind of um, being a little lost and the angels telling them something. And then this coming Sunday, Mary Magdalene, as uh, she goes back, um, and, uh, again, she doesn't recognize it is Jesus. Again, um, they're thinking in the old ways. Um, they're thinking about um, Jesus continuing his life as if nothing ever changed. And then um, she mistakes him for the gardener. And then Jesus calls her name, and she recognizes him in that way. She turns around, uh, which is also another symbolic way. And then she wants to just clutch onto him, you know. She just wants to hold onto his feet. And she says, oh, no, 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 which is uh, probably another symbolic, um, I think, a moment in there. But Jesus is trying to help uh, her, but also his followers to realize that uh, he's going to relate to them in a different way that um, his resurrection is ushering in a new normal. It is not going to be the old way of relating to him, of his physical presence, but it's going to be a different way. A different way that um, 
they will be able to access him through the breaking of the bread, uh, which is our Eucharist. They're going to be able to um, hear his voice in uh, the proclamation of the word, which is another way that he nourishes us. And, um, and so I think um, the gospel today is uh, something that uh, is relatable to our time, is relatable to all of us um, who uh, find ourselves in uncertainty like the disciples and trying to rush to go back to what we used to know. And maybe God's saying, not so fast. Don't be too hasty. There is some wisdom in staying in this place. There is some wisdom in just being in trusting God to shepherd us to the new place, to the new life, to the new normal that um, only God at this moment knows what that is going to look like. And so for all of us, uh, we pray for God's wisdom. We pray for faith. We pray for trust, um, trusting in the God who knows uh, what his plans are for each and every one of us, and that uh, when the time is right, uh, God will help us to realize that it is right. And so we pray that uh, we will have that trust, that um, with God uh, all will be well, and we will know where he wants us to land at the right time. Let us offer our prayers to God. We offer this Mass uh, for the repose of the soul of Augusta Sendeto Halim, for the healing and consolation of his family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We also pray for so many others um, who are losing loved ones these days. Uh, for Neil, uh, the, the son of our parishioners uh, who died just suddenly uh, two days ago, but also for all those um, who are losing loved ones to the coronavirus, for the repose of the souls of those uh, that we have lost, but for the healing and consolation of those um, who uh, will miss them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the healing of those um, who are struggling with this virus and other difficult illnesses. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and uh, all the experts who are working hard to um, save lives and those also working on finding uh, vaccines and remedies uh, for the success of their efforts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for those who are terrified, um, those who are alone, those who are anxious to get back to the life they once knew, uh, for God's patience, uh, for God's healing and reassurance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts. So let us present to God our other concerns. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask you, gracious God, to bless and grant all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good love of the Holy Church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray that solemn exchange brought about by this Paschal offerings 
that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to you, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it right, right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death. By rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the adding hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself. So that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly employ by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and, and drink, drink this cup, cup we, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself, granted we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he might give us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially 
with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and entire people you have gained for your world. Listen, gracious, to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you in your compassion. O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all oh, your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to Augustus, to Neil, to all those that we have lost, and to all those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give that evidence to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you destroyed the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord share with each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be filled. Let us now make our of spiritual communion, I will, I will take the lead and I would like you to follow me. My Jesus, I believe. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I believe. That you are present in the most holy sacrament. That you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there. I embrace you as if you are already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Master, go in peace, glorify you.